Hello, very good evening. Warm welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine. Thank you for joining us. Presented as always by Pick and Pay, where usually I'd be sending you off to buy some fabulous wine. The best I can do at the moment is to tell you to go and have a browse through the online section so that as soon as we come to an end of this horrible restriction, we will be able to know exactly what we want to restock what I suspect are some diminishing and depleting sellers with. And there is a fantastic, fantastic range available. And there's a fantastic range of wine to be had today. Now, I can't tell you for sure what we are trying today because uh, one half of our guest list is not with us at the moment. I think that Chris and Andrea Mullineux are currently in California where it is very, very early on in the morning and we're trying to track them down. They're supposed to be joining us, um, but uh, we're not sure uh, if we've got them just yet. So we will keep trying and uh, hopefully get them on. But even without them and the Great Heart Wines, which uh, forms part of such an exciting project, one I really do want to chat about, uh, even without them, we've still got seven, seven wines to run through today. And they've all been sent up to me by KWV's resident mad scientist, uh, who runs the Mentors range and comes up with cool and different and fun and innovative spins on wine each year. And her new selection, as always, they've got people jumping up and down with great excitement and proclaiming them to be as wonderful as ever. Do I believe them? No, of course not. I have to try myself. And so I've got every single one of them in admittedly very small glasses. This is why I'm so grateful for my Coravan. Uh, I will be trying them all with Ezel in just a moment. Uh, throwing forward to the rest of the week, Thursday, we're going to be chatting to some of the trophy winners from the old Mutual Trophy Wine Show that Michael Fridjohn and I uh, did the announcement of last week at the Houghton, and that's still available online if you did miss it. So we've got that on the horizon and heading towards August when we are looking forward to having a huge number of very influential South African women in the wine industry populate the show for the course of that month. So that is all to come. Right now, though, let's head down to KWV where we've got her up rather early for a Monday, uh, but she's got a big smile on face as always. One of my favorite people in wine is Elf and Black. Welcome back to Dan Really Likes Wine. Oh, I think we've got you on mute there, Rizal. Let's see if we can get her back. Dum, 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 dum. And clearly it was a big weekend down at KWV. Lots of research. Uh, let's, uh, all right, well, while we wait for Rizal, just a reminder, yeah, we are hoping to have Chris and Andrea Mullineux join us uh, with their Great Heart Project, uh, which is one of a number of really cool social innovation projects we're seeing in the wine industry and in particular the Shannon and the Red Blend we we're tasting today. Let's try Izzel again. Have we got it? I'm there back. I'm back. Um, <laughs> like I said, it's early on a Monday morning. I just got unplugged here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> always good to be back. And I was on mute for 20 seconds, and now I'm, I'm back. I'm online. <laughs> well, welcome back. And it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. And it was a pleasure to run through this extraordinary collection of wines, which we have. I did get a bit of a glimpse of them, thanks to a virtual lunch you very kindly hosted for us uh, the week before last. So I've got a, a bit of a glimpse of what is in store. Uh, but before we power through all seven of these wonderful wines, for people who don't know, give them a, a bit of an idea of what the Mentors range is, how it works, and uh, what they can expect from it. Yeah, so the Mentor Cellar was created in 2006 as an experimental cellar where we as winemakers get the opportunity to play around with different niche varietals, use different barrel coopers, um, unique varieties, different winemaking techniques. And ever since that, the brand has just grown from strength to strength. And we always try to push the boundaries everywhere we go, um, doing a lot of experiments in the winery, um, playing around with whole bunches, whole berries, natural ferments, um, put it in old barrels, new barrels, leave it on the skins for three to four months. Um, but also focusing on the unique varietals that you can get and pushing the boundaries to see what we as KWV can produce, but not just KWV, um, the South African wine industry. Everything that works in the mental cellar, we will take to the biggest sellers to improve the quality of all the brands at KWV. As you know, KWV produce about 16 million liters of wine every year. Um, and we've got big brands like Rudeberg, Cathedral Cellar, um, our classic range, Labory, 
So it's really trying to improve the quality of not just the mentors range, but all the brands at KWV. Um, and what we're going to taste today is we're focusing on the 2018 vintage and looking at the 2018 white wines and the current release of the red wines is a 2018 red. Um, yeah, and we're tasting some. The last time I was on on Dan, it was just before we won the Vertex with with the orchestra, and we just got received really good news from Concos Mondal in um, Brussels last week with the Peril, then we're also going to taste this. So you'll be the first one that I taste the Peril 2018 with uh, after the great news that we received. Oh, congrats. Oh, congrats. Uh, it's always a case uh, of a case. one, one. Uh, as opposed uh, to as you uh, anything, uh, because uh, there are so many accolades that come the way of the wine. And uh, it, it's, it's wine that... I guess it almost demands some sort of recognition because it, it's quite a lot of trust that gets placed in you as well. You are uh, the mad scientist of the KWV team. Uh, you get let loose in the cellar, told to have fun and, and do what you want, which I suppose on one hand it is a wonderful opportunity to be creative and to be free and to play around and to experiment. But on the other hand, maybe just adds a little bit of pressure to, to deliver something quite special given the opportunity that's been presented to you. I, I had a bit of a giggle when I saw the, the mad scientist. Um, I don't always I, I think of myself not about a mad, not a, as a mad scientist rather than more the creative side, um, but I also do like science. Um, yes, but it's, it's, it gives us the opportunity to feel a bit free and get the opportunity to look at different um, ways of winemaking and understanding the chemistry behind winemaking because a lot of winemakers are we are creative, we are artists, we really like to be a bit, have a bit of freedom. Um, and I think KWB give me the opportunity to push the boundaries and yeah, you need to make mistakes. If I don't make mistakes, I'm actually not doing my job right. So I really always trying to, and I do push the boundaries and I do make mistakes, um, but that's the best way to learn. Um, I remember when I just started at KWB 10 years, 11 years ago, I don't want to give my age away. Um, but yeah, Richard Rowe was the chief winemaker at that time. And he, he always told me, I'm so glad you can make mistakes. Now I know you're human. So you really need to make mistakes to learn and to understand and to know what to do. Um, and that's what I always tell the seller team as well. Don't worry, we can make mistakes. We just need to fix them. So we do make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> oh, that is certainly not evident in any of the wine that you've sent my way. And I doubt it will be evident this evening. Oh, there we go. Uh, apologies. We've had some uh, some fiber issues in my neighborhood today, uh, but I think we're back. Um, yeah, so uh, just saying there, uh, Annelise Bernardi saying hi, Azel. Uh, Johan van Eck saying uh, hi, Azel. Kwaiki van Blark. And uh, Annelise Bernardi, I think, echoing most of us, yay, mach lekker mistakes. <laughs> uh, that actually, that'd be, a, that'd be a great name for a wine, Hugh Azel. Lekker mistake. <laughs> Well, we can try that one, eh? I think they're going to like it at KWB, but we can try that one. Maybe it will sell out quickly. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the philosophy behind the mentors, your approach to it. Each year, the, the, the broad thread is that you are making the wine and you have a particular approach as a winemaker, but in terms of, of styling these wines and giving them a sense of connection, how do you approach that each year? How do you choose what you're going to make? So we've got uh, seven wines as standard SKUs uh, that we will always produce. It's the Grenache Blanc, the Chenin Blanc. Uh, we've got a Pinotage, Petit Bordeaux, Cabernet Franc, um, Artu Blend. That's the canvas. It's a Rhone style. And the Bordeaux style is the Orgesha. And then we've got our Peril that we recently, in 2017, brought into the Mentors range. So it's called now the Mentors Peril. Um, and then every single year, we have the freedom to do a limited edition, and that would be a wine that is looking exceptional in a specific vintage. Um, and that's always a thousand bottles. 
you've had the Carmenere, you've had the Petit Shira, and the next um, limited edition will be launched in October. So we'll probably have another session like this, tasting the next one. But I can't, unfortunately, I can't reveal that limited edition now. I get the messages from Sweden every day asking me, oh, you, you forgot to tell me what that varietal is. But I, I kept my promise and I'm dead silent at the moment. Uh, so it's it's quite an interesting varietal. I'm very excited to launch this. Um, and then, but the philosophy behind the mentor cell is, like with all the other brands at KWV, we work according to volume. And um, if that's in the forecast, but with mentors, it's all about quality. Only the best of the best goes into the bottle. Um, if we only have a thousand bottles or we have 2000 bottles, that's and it meets our quality expectation, that's all that's going into the bottle. Um, it's actually easy for me to just look at all our vineyard blocks. Uh, we've got a great viticultural team led by Marco Ventrella, um, our Italian viticulturist, exceptional guy with a lot of knowledge. And then he and his team go out and select the best blocks and we monitor it in the winery. And if it works for three years in the mental cellar, we will continue with, with the grapes. Um, and then for me, the most important thing about winemaking is there's three things. Your picking date, understanding when you want to pick it, understanding the style that you want to produce. Um, there's varietals that's a bit more versatile, like Shiraz, where you can pick at 23 bulling or 26, 26, all depending on the style that you want to produce. Um, the second most important thing for me is managing your pH and your TA, um, adding tartaric acid on the grapes as soon as possible when it arrives in the winery. And then the third thing is barrel selection. You can produce the best wines, but you can mess it up by not selecting the best barrels. So that's the three things that I um, think is most important for me and what I'm focusing on and what we at, at KWV are focusing on to producing the styles that we want to. And um, I don't want to produce a Bordeaux style. I don't want to produce a own style. I think we're working towards producing a South African style and a KWB the mentor style. And that takes 10 to 15 to 20 years to decide on stylistically where you want to go. All about fruit purity, integration of oak, um, well-balanced, elegant wines, and treasuring the fruit purity and the, the grapes that you receive. Um, you can't always make the best wines of every single berry that comes into the winery, but then you can produce really good components and understanding the terror, understanding the soil, understanding what you want to achieve with the specific block. Um, Dan, if you leave me, I will talk for two hours. <laughs> uh, yeah, we did one of these earlier in the year. She asked, uh, asked Azella a similar question when we played nine holes of golf and came back and she was just uh, <laughs> finishing off. Let's jump into the wine because you've worked up a thirst in me. There are two whites in this particular range. There's a Shannon and a uh, Grenache Blanc. Which one are we starting with? Well, let's start with a, let's start with a Grenache because it's in my glass and I already had like half a glass. Um, <laughs> So, so the Grenache Blanc, Grenache Blanc is a very unique varietal, and that's also what we want to emphasize in the Mentors range is we have the traditional, two traditional varieties from South Africa, the Pinot Rose and the Chenin, and that was really focusing on we need to have two top-tier um, wines in the Mentors range that really produce, that represent South Africa. But then the other single varietals in the range is a Grenache Blanc and a Petit Vidot and a, a Cabernet Franc just to show that these niche varietals that not everyone in South Africa or in the world produce and that we want to champion and we actually can gather a lot of knowledge by doing a lot of experiments and trials in the winery. So yeah, Grenache Blanc, 10 years ago when we started producing a Grenache Blanc, there was only like four or five people that actually produced the Grenache Blanc. Interesting thing about Grenache Blanc is the berries is this big, if you can see it's quite big, bigger than my eye, um, and the skin is so thin. So because of the skin that's so thin, it's so sensitive to rot. And then it actually, the bunches is a lot bigger than any, any other um, wine grapes. Um, and it is so sensitive to rot. So it starts rotting from the inside. You see these beautiful bunches, but then when you walk closer, it's got dripping on the soil and you can actually see how it rots from the inside. 
Um, and it's probably a wine with the most personalities. So when you taste it in the vineyard, you get that floral notes. When it comes into the winery, it actually, during fermentation, it tastes like wet soil. Um, and then suddenly after alcoholic fermentation, you get that florals, limes, um, fresh flavors that you get. It's almost like you walk into a perfume shop. But then the most amazing thing about the varietal is that it aged so well. Just because it's got very low pH, the pH actually is 2.97. It's really unseen in any varietal in South Africa, but also in the world. I think the only variety that you get or wine that you get with a pH under three is probably Champagne or MCC. So this is a blend of 50% of Wellington grapes, 50% of Paul grapes, 90% um, of this wine spent in barrel for nine months, and then 10% was in was in tank, um, and it's 100% natural ferment. Um, and it's so interesting how this wine, with age in a bottle, it, it changed to almost a Riesling style, and perfect in this weather currently with spicy food, hot curries. Um, this is just one of the versatile varieties and wines that you can get. And we've had frequent conversations about the aging of white wine and your white wine in particular. Uh, and I notice it does say on the black, uh, and you put it in bold just so people don't miss this. And it's not really a smoke thing. This is Isel shouting at you from the back of her label. Uh, it can be enjoyed now, but will benefit from selling for a further five years. She's basically telling you don't touch this until at least 2023. So I'm only doing this because it's the show. Um, I see a couple of people uh, chipping in. Uh, Johan van Eck saying, your Grenache Blanc got us hooked on the mentor's range. Uh, and there it is indeed, the uh, the Grenache Blanc. Uh, and then also he's asking a question of you. Speaking of a South African style, do you or would you look at co-ferment varietals rather than just blending them at the end, Isel? Yeah, it's a very interesting um, question. Uh, we are actually trialing with it. We are actually playing around with um, blending the components, but on small scale. I'm talking small scale, two or three barrels. Um, I would play around, for instance, with the red, um, the red different components for the orchestra blend. And we're actually trialing now with it at adding this, tasting all the barrels, understanding the uh, varieties that goes into the orchestra blend. That's our Bordeaux style blend and then making a small blend up and aging it together um, in two barrels for the 18 months. And we will compare it to the blend at, at the end. And I'm also doing a trial with where we bottle it and taste it directly after bottling and where we keep it for six months in a bottle. And now we currently add a year in a bottle before we release it. But it's so interesting where you can look at different varietals, for instance, People think that white wine, just after bottling, you need to give it one month in a bottle and then you need to start selling it. We are looking at the at the Grenache and the Chenin now, where we used to release it after six months after bottling. Now we're actually thinking of moving it to releasing it only in a year's time. So there's a lot of experiments going on, uh, still a lot of learning. I, I, I still have 30 years of winemaking left um, to start learning how to make wine. So it's, it's really exciting to start doing all these experiments. Um, but yes, we are trialing with it. We are looking at, I know in, in Bordeaux, they actually do it. They blend the wines and then they take it um, to barrel for the 18 months for the whole maturation. Um, I'm still a bit scared to do that uh, because a lot of the blocks shows different potential um, at different stages of maturation. And sometimes the wines that you select as the best now just after vintage, not always the wines that look best in 18 months' time. Um, but it all depends on, on the wine style that you want to do. And I think it's sometimes we, we at KWB have the opportunity to have all these different blocks, different areas that we can play around where we have the luxury where we can actually keep it separate, where um, a winery like a state in Stellenbosch or in Swartland, they only have the wines that they're currently working with from their estate. And if it's good enough or not good enough, they're actually going to blend them together. But we have the opportunity to select the best ones. As I always say, I cherry pick the best, the best varietals and the best regions.
<laughs> uh, I can imagine Tanya's got your accountants on the phone now wanting to know what on earth you're thinking. Holding back the wine for another six months, we've got to sell the stuff. Stop her, stop her. <laughs> but, uh, we, uh, we will benefit from it. Already there's that heavy whisper of a Riesling to the nose. Um, and I think this has got a butter chicken curry for dinner written all over it. Uh, let's jump over to the Chenin Blanc. When we did the virtual tasting a couple of weeks ago, there was great excitement about your Chenin Blanc. Uh, introduce it to us. So, the, the Chenin Blanc is from, from Paul region, um, after battle, just behind Paul Mountain. And where the Grenache Blanc the berries is this big, the Chenin Blanc is so small um, that I've, one day in Harvest Time, one of my friends actually uh, sent a phone me and said to me, Zul, I know Harvest Time you work quite late and you're very tired, but why are you posting a photo of your hand on Facebook? I said, no, but just look closely. There's actually a small little berry in my hand. And the nice thing about Chenin Blanc is when you bite into that berry, you get all the flavors that you actually get in the wine. It's a lot of apricot peaches, uh, creaminess almost coming through already, a lot of florals. Um, yeah, this wine just won gold now at Concours Fondal as well. Um, and it's 100% from Paul. Two components, one was barrel ferment, uh, both were barrel fermented, but one is 87% is natural ferment, and the rest um, was inoculated with the commercial yeast. And we leave it on the lease for 270 days where we just stir it up to get that creaminess on the palate. Um, this also got a pH of 2.9, so the ageability of this wine is exceptional, um, with a quite a high acidity, 7.4, but you don't taste the acidity. It's really, it just marries into the wine. And that's why I like all the white wines from South Africa. And I just want to jump up and down and tell the people, just drink all the white wines. Don't be stereotyped like all South Africans that want to drink the 2022 vintage already. And we haven't even harvested it. Um, there's so much potential in aging your white wines. So many gems out there. I, th I think there are actually a few 2022 Sauvignon Blancs available in Johannesburg, uh, if you <laughs> ask the right people. <laughs> All right, two cracking white wines, especially if you've got some food in hand. Uh, let's jump over to the red uh, and start with, uh, what have we got? Ah, yes, look at the colour on this. That's the Grenache Noir. Oh, it's a glorious colour, this. Um, uh, uh, introduce, give me the background on this and place it in the context of uh, a Grenache Blanc. Are they are the grapes related? Uh, do they come from a similar background? Yeah, so, the, so firstly, we don't have the Grenache Noir in the range anymore. Um, so the Grenache Noir is, is actually, we produced the first Grenache Noir in 2015, um, and that was a Stellenbosch and a Wellington block. And it was a blend 50 50. Um, and now we have in 2017, we actually moved to 100% Wellington. And it's interesting that you, you look at the color and you see it's lighter, um, where the 2015 was a lot darker. But it is because of the Stellenbosch portion, the berries was a lot smaller. Um, and it's got darker color and it's got more plums and dark cherries, where the Wellington portion actually is bigger berries light in color and it actually looked like a Grenache Noir. So, and this is 20% is um, natural ferment and it's got whole bunches in and it's spent um, 18 months in barrels. I actually would have loved to take it out on 16 months, but we tasted, 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 and uh, we actually decided to keep it a bit longer, but it's all the barrels. Only 20% is new oak. Um, yeah, so it's, it's Different style. If you look at the Grenache Noir, it's going to be interesting when you taste the Grenache Noir and you see this different style compared to the other Mentos reds. Um, it's total different style. Um, we try to bring a bit of that whole bunches, whole berries, a bit of the stems, because you want that powdery tannins. And that's also the Grenache Noir that goes into the 100% um, Mentos Grenache Noir goes it's about 30% of our canvas Rhone style blend as well. 
Oh, we've got uh, Reginald Peckler joining us from Cheetah Plains. Hi, Azel. Again and again, I fell in love with the mentors range, like really walking into a perfume boutique. I can't find a word to describe it any better. Oh, my gosh. You are just like an undercover agent for all olfactory senses. Reginald <laughs> is smitten. <laughs> yeah, I always love getting Reginald's messages. He's got a, a real way with words. Thank you, Reggie. And Monique Roo, who is having a glass of my favorite, the mentors wine, the Petit Verdot, was listening from the Swarkland. Well, let's go over to the uh, Petit Verdot, uh, having just tried some of the Grenache Noir. Uh, Petit Verdot, I'm always interested to find as a, a single variety because so often it's 4% of a red blend uh, and it's uh, kind of written off as, uh, as the little bit of salt and pepper uh, that's dashed at the end and, and never given uh, much of a starring role. Uh, why Petit Verdot on its own? We started playing around with Petit Verdot in 2009, and um, I, I just love this variety. Um, like you said, 4 or 5%, adding Petit Verdot to any blend just makes it 10 times better. The berries are so small, it's so concentrated. Um, it's pitch black, a lot of concentration, a um, lot of tannin structure. And the reason why you don't find a lot of Petit Verdots on its own is because it's one of the Bordeaux varietals, um, and in Bordeaux, it, doesn't uh, reach optimum ripeness because it's a very late ripening varietal. In South Africa, we're very fortunate with our climate that we get Petit Verdot to optimum ripeness. And I think this varietal can be the rock star of South Africa. Um, it's got all these small little green berries in between the blackberries, um, and it's very time consuming if you do sorting on it. When I uh, sort uh, Petit Verdot, we do in the mental cellar, we do vine sorting, berry sorting, everything is kept separate so that we can evaluate every single block um, on its own, every single experiment that we want to do. If we want to uh, trial different soils or different rows, different trailer systems, we keep everything separate. But when we uh, um, receive Petit Verdot in the winery, we I actually don't even write it. We, I've got a big whiteboard in the winery. I don't even write Petit Verdot on the board because then no one shows up for work. Because where a normal 500 kilos of berries takes us to sort, takes us 10 to 15 minutes, Petit Verdot takes us 45 minutes to an hour to do sorting. But it's just got this intense flavor. And the most important thing with Petit Verdot is cap management. You need to taste, taste, taste. I always say you can have all the things wrong in winemaking, if you can just taste it, morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, you just need to taste the wines and understand and treat every single tank, every single block is a different personality. If we all have the same personality and we all have the same taste, how boring would life have been? Um, if we all like the same wines, how boring would life be? <laughs> and it would have been so easy just being a Coca-Cola factory and just pressing a button. But yeah, this Petit Verdot is from three three different blocks. Two of the blocks are on the same farm. The one was planted in 1997, and this gives you a lot of plums and dark cherries. The other one was planted in 2014. This is your floral uh, perfume, a lot of red fruit. And the last is from a different farm. It's the low response. The berries is a lot bigger than the one in Stalamash. Um, it's also a lot of florals and perfume. I actually use it in the orchestra blend as well, just to get it a bit of a lift on the nose. But it's pitch black, concentrated, and then it's got these big, bold tannins. Um, and Petit Verdot, I love it because it's, for me, it's like it's like your mother. You look at it and you see this elegant woman that's front of house. She's so elegant, always smells so amazing. Um, it's like perfume, but Back at the ranch, she is making the food, sorting out the kids, making sure the house is running. Uh, and that's what Petit Verdot is on the palate. It's just all beautiful, a lot of concentration, a lot of tannin structure. And the ageability of Petit Verdot is amazing. I had the 2009 about two weeks ago, and that wine is just standing so strong. And I wish I could have another bottle to drink in 10 years' time. There's a wonderful intensity to it. And those tannins just grip onto the inside of your mouth and refuse to let go. Uh, if you haven't tried a Petit Verdot in its own right, 
then this is an ideal starting point. Penultimate wine, let's go to the world of music and the orchestra. What has band leader Ezel produced for us here? Yes, so, so the orchestra is um, Alboro Sal Blend. And um, it's, it's got all, all the border varietals, not only the five, but it's got number six as well, the Carmen Air. So it's Cabernet dominated with Petit Verdot, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and then 6% of Carmen Air. So there's only a few single varieties of Carmen Airs on the market, and we launched our first Carmen Air 100% Carmen Air in 2019, but it was a 2017 vintage. Um, and it's a block in Stellenbosch where it's only, there's only 8.56 hectares planted in the whole of South Africa. And that block is 1.16 hectares. So we only get a little bit. I think I've got, some years I've got 1,000 litres. Um, the next year I'll get 2,000 litres. But this wine is... It's like an orchestra, all the different instruments doesn't always make the best sound on its own. All the different Bordeaux varietals doesn't make the best wine on its own. But for this blend, we select stylistically what we want to achieve. It's a crossing, with, it's a cross between New World fruit and then the elegance and the dusty road, the typical Bordeaux style. So it's a combination of new and old world, but really focusing on managing the acidity on the grapes, getting the pH as low as possible, getting the ageability of this wine to go for another 10, 15 years. Um, 2018 is drinking exceptional now, but I think this wine needs 10 to 15 more years. Um, 18 months in barrels and the barrel selection where it takes us about three, four weeks to just get to a final blend of, of the orchestra because we taste every single varietal selecting all the best barrels for this specific wine. And there's everything in here from the uh, the delicate flute through to the thumping trombone, uh, all coming together in a very aptly named wine. Right, last one for you before we let you get back, because judging by your Petit Verdot tasting schedule, you've got some more to taste any minute now. Uh, the last of them is pays tribute to one of the greats, uh, Professor Perold, which would suggest that we're looking at something that's got a bit of pinotage in it. Yes, so Abram Perrault, the uh, Abram Perrault is the father of Pinotage. He did the crossing between Pinot Noir and Hermitage, also known as Sinsa, in 1925. And he actually started working at KWV in 1927 as the first general manager, chief winemaker at KWV. But he wasn't just the legend um, that crafted Pinotage. He actually also brought into South Africa 100 and 77 different varietals. The government actually sent him overseas to go and look at different varietals. And he was also uh, one of the lecturers, the first lecturer at the university. And he's just an amazing person and, and he's an icon in South Africa. And we are fortunate to have the name Perrault. Um, and that's why it's our flagship wine of the Mentors range. It's the flagship of the Mentors range. Um, and just giving a tribute to Abram Perrault. So it's a Cape blend. So what does a Cape blend mean? You need to have between 30 and 70% Pinotage in the blend. So this is 33% Pinotage, 29% Cabernet Sauvignon, 24% is Shiraz, 7% Petit Shiraz, and 7% of Petit Verdot. So it's really what we do is we look for elegance, finesse, fruit purity, um, but ageability. I don't want to taste the oak on this wine. It just needs, it needs to shout elegance, um, and it needs to almost marry together all these all these varietals. Um, what I do is I always select the best Pinotas in the winery, the best Cabernet, the best Shiraz, and then we do barrel selection, and then we'll start on small scale, um, playing around with different blends and then we'll do a blind tasting with all the winemakers getting together and rating the wines and if it's a thousand liters or it's ten thousand liters the best of the best goes into the bottle and Perold wasn't isn't just the mentor for the mentor seller and for KWV I think he's the mentor of all mentors in the South African wine industry and this is really a tribute to Abram Perold. Um, and I'm so glad that it actually won the trophy now at Concourse Mundial 
because it's really it's it's the icon of the South African wine industry, and he was an icon in the South African wine industry. Interesting is this is 100% new oak. So Dan, if you taste any oak, you must tell me. Then I need to make a change in the winemaking here. <laughs> no, I think uh, I think the professor will be very happy with the people. So uh, you've got it nice today. Very quickly, you have a pair of melon you risen from their Californian slumber. Uh, you also sent up something of a sweeter nature. Let me just grab the bottle here. There we go. The uh, Noble Late Harvest out of Walker Bay. Uh, give us a very quick rundown on this one. Well, so so it's uh, Walker Bay Sauvignon Blanc. Um, Twenty percent is in barrels, but it's like quickly. I'm I'm very young and I'm I'm already grey, um, and that's because of Noble Late Harvest. Um, it's one of those variety uh, wines that it's very intense. What we do is we treat it like a red wine in the beginning, then it goes through the white wine process, ferments for about three weeks, and 240 grams per liter of sugar, alcohol 9.7, acidity of 8.3, and a pH of 3.4. Uh, um, the 2012 actually won the trophy, international trophy at Decanter, um, and the 2015 is on its on its heels. Uh, so if you can buy, if you can still get your hands on one of those bottles, make sure you get it. Um, you can order online at the Wine Emporium, but you will have, you'll have to wait till we uh, um, can sell wine again. But yeah, very interesting. A lot of people make Noble Aid Harvest of Shannon and Chardonnay or Rieslings, um, but this is a Savio Blanc block from Walker Bay. And we wouldn't expect anything else from you than something a little different than everybody else. Sauvignon Blanc of a sweeter varietal wrapping up seven of the Mentors wines. My Coravan has had very good use indeed this evening. Azal, it is always an absolute delight catching up with you. Some more great wine uh, from somebody who is just so dedicated to her craft. And I know Tanya has told me that you taste every single vintage of every single wine every single day just to make sure it's okay. <laughs> and that's great commitment. So uh, uh, keep that up. Keep making fabulous wine. And thank you for sharing the KWB Mentors range with us this evening. Thank you, Dan. Have a lovely evening and drink a lot of wine. <laughs> I shall need no further encouragement. Right, there we go. The wonderful Isel van Blurk with all seven of her mentors' wines. Uh, let's dash over. I think they're in California. I might be wrong here, uh, but let me double check. They are uh, uh, the, uh, I think we've described them with this before. They're pretty much the, the Beyonce and Jay-Z of the wine world together, giving us the Malinieu and uh, Leo family wines across an assortment of ranges which have just been expanded. Let's find out how and why. Chris and Andrea, welcome back to Dan Really Likes Wine. Hey Dan, how are you? Ah, it is just a Chris. My yeah, apologies. <laughs> Andrea's with family uh, today, yeah, so it's it's uh, just me if that's all right. I'm no, it's I'm absolutely fine. fine. The better looking of the pair, yeah. I've always been. Uh, <laughs> Lovely to have you. Am I right in saying you're in California at the moment? Yeah, we are. We um, obviously Andrea's uh, family is from California. She, she's from here originally, and um, the last yeah two years uh, haven't been able to come and see family at all. So we uh, we took the opportunity with the school holidays now to to zip over and, and come and see some family here. So um, yeah, so it's so it's uh, yeah pretty early in the morning here. We we uh, it's eight o'clock. So <laughs> uh, I'm I'm drinking coffee if that's okay. <laughs> They were open some wine. You can possibly not have wine on this show. Yeah. Uh, before we start talking about wine, uh, just out of interest, uh, you've been there a little while. Compare uh, how you find life in California to life in South Africa and the cloud of COVID that envelops us all. Uh, it's amazing. It's incredible here. Um, it, you know, the things are just so open. Um, I, I landed and literally the next day got a vaccine. Um, almost you know, it, it's almost like life is back to normal, really. It's, it's quite incredible. So um, obviously people are, are cautious um, in stores. Um, you should wear a mask if you're not vaccinated. Um, but it's it's really pretty, pretty free. And this weekend past was um, Independence Day, 4th of July. And it was just incredible to see people outdoors um, really carrying on with their lives as normal. So yeah, quite a quite a contrast to to South Africa, unfortunately. 
but uh, yeah, we, we'll get there. We'll get there as well. <laughs> I almost wish I hadn't asked you that question. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you're enjoying it and, and that you're open to part of the world that you're linked to, not just by having uh, a masterful winemaker for a wife of Californian origin, but also, uh, am I right in saying that you make some wine in America as well? Yeah, Andrea has a, a, a very small project, a tiny little, uh, almost like a hobby project uh, called Fog Monster. Um, that's, yeah, that it's, it's really a, an interesting thing that's focused on working with old vines here. Um, so works with, with a vineyard planted in 1888. Um, so yeah, a really, really interesting and exciting project here. Um, so yeah, luckily this, the seasons are different. Northern Hemisphere harvest is in September, October. So, so Andrea is able to to come over and, and, and make some wine uh, that time of the year. And it doesn't really mess with, with uh, yeah, w w making wine in South Africa. So, yeah. Well, if, uh, if you have some in your luggage when you get back, it'd be lovely to taste it. We'll and, get uh, together, yeah. Well, <laughs> cool. See, uh, see how you manage with those inferior American grapes as opposed to the great South African ones you normally get to work with. Speaking of it's, grapes. Um, and Andrea once mentioned to me, I think, that it tastes best at um, Cheetah Plains. She, um, she, she, she says it's really uh, well suited to, to that kind of landscape. <laughs> Reginald will be absolutely <laughs> delighted to hear that. The range of wine is not just the Malinu wine, the Malinu lead. There is also a new addition to the family. It sounds both really exciting and also uh, wonderful in terms of what it's doing. Introduce us to your great heart range and the story behind it. Yeah, so um, we obviously, you know, we're known for our, our Malinu winery in the in the Swatland and uh, our Lupusan winery in Franschuk, which are um, obviously wineries that are very much focused on, on what they do. Um, but we, we've got an incredible team who work for us um, with, that have grown with us over the years. Um, and for, for a while, we've been you know, thinking of how, how can we reward our staff um, in, in a proper, meaningful way. Um, you know, we, we try as, as, a, as a winery to really look after everyone as, as best as possible. Um, but particularly last year with, uh, when COVID hit and, and the lockdown started and, and we had prohibition, um, you know, a lot of our staff who, who have been super loyal to us for, for you know, 10 plus years, um, you know, some of them had to take salary cuts for a while. Um, it, it was, you know, really hard to do uh, that just to keep our business going, um, uh, you know, with, with these staff who've been so, so loyal, hardworking and dedicated and no one complained, no one, you know, everyone wanted to, to just keep, keep the business going. And it really galvanized Andrew and myself to think, you know, how, how can we, we really reward our, our staff on a, on a long-term basis and, and in a proper, meaningful way. Um, and so, yeah, we, we, we've started a, a brand new company, in fact, um, and the company is 100% owned by our staff. So the, our, all of our employees or all of our employees who work for us for at least two years are, are shareholders of the company. Um, the company is called Greatheart. And uh, it, it has a, a brand, a label, which is called Great Heart as well. Um, and yeah, it, it's for us a, a really exciting opportunity. We, we're, we use our existing vineyards and our own infrastructure. So our winery, our warehousing, our, our sales team, our, you know, our, our staff as well to, to make the wine. So the, the wines are made um, from, from the same vineyards that we use for, for Malinu or for Lupesant. Um, in the same cellars with the same attention to detail. Um, and yeah, the, the same, I think, you know, in, incredible intensity, but an in, incredible balanced intensity to them. So um, yeah, the, the, the wines we've we just released this year, um, there are four different cuvées, but two of them are going to be exclusive to pick and pay, um, a Chenin Blanc and a Red Blend, both from the, the Swatland. Um, and other than from our, our winery itself um, and a few restaurants around the country, really Pick and Pay will be the only place um, in South Africa where, where one can, can get these, these two wines specifically. So we're, we're super excited and, and, and proud that, that, that uh, Pick and Pay has come to the party and, and are really supporting us with this. So, so thank you. There are two main challenges, I think, with uh, a lot of your wine. Uh, for many people, it is, uh, it's is—it's on the upper end of the price bracket. It's still considerably cheaper than wine of a similar quality from anywhere else in the world. Yeah. Um, 
obstacle there. That's one obstacle. But the far greater hurdle is actually just getting your hands on some because it's not made in huge numbers and it disappears at high speed, which is fantastic for you guys as winemakers. Where does this wine sit in terms of a price bracket and in terms of volume? So, yeah, so price points, um, both the Shannon and the Red are 120 rand a bottle uh, on the shelf. So, yeah, I think a, a really great price given the fact that they're, you know, made from really old vine, low yielding fruit um, and, and with the, you know, the, the attention to detail, the, the natural winemaking that goes into them. Um, I think they're, it's, it's a really, really great price point. Um, production is, it's higher than, than what would be for our Malinu Old Vines White or our Syrah or, or any of our Lupusant wines. Um, so about 40 to 60,000 bottles of each. Um, and uh, yeah, a significant chunk will be coming to, to pick and pay. Um, and yeah, the, I think it's going to, uh, it's, it's our first time partnering with pick and pay. So I'm, I'm still learning the ropes with how they work, but it, it'll be in their, I think they call it top two tier stores. So it's about 90 stores around South Africa. Um, but yeah, spread pretty much everywhere. So in the Western Cape, in uh, Gauteng, uh, in KZN, in, in the, in the garden route. So yeah, so pretty widely uh, distributed, but not, but not in, in all the stores. Obviously, we, we we don't make enough to to be in every single store. All right, so start looking out for it. Those two in particular, Shannon and the Red Blend, which we are about to taste. Uh, before we do though, just in terms of, of the actual wine making, uh, this is just a, another example of Malinu philanthropy. I know how much work you guys do through. Cape Winemakers Guild, and you support a, a whole range of causes. Uh, is there a, an element of uh, bringing in young winemakers using this project uh, to help grow that side of their yeah. education? Yeah, so so, so obviously the, the, there's two parts mainly to it. So, so the one is a, is a financial part. So, so as I said, every single employee of our company who's worked for us for at least two years becomes automatically a shareholder of the company. Um, and we, as the, as Malinu and Liu family wines, will cover the production costs of the wine. So, so we we basically fund the the production of the wine, um, and the, the the profits of the the sales of the wine are declared as every year as a dividend to our employees or as uh, the shareholders. So um, that that's the the one the one aspect of it. And then the other aspect is um, yeah. I'm sorry to borrow borrow a word from. <laughs> From from Izel and the KWB is a is a mentorship role, um, and and um, so we we look to to elevate and and, and lift um, employees to to have a bit more responsibility um, in in the company is because it's their own company. So so for instance in the winemaking side uh, for Malinu and Liu, uh, Andrea is the winemaker, um, but we have an incredible assistant winemaker Gaynor who's been with us now for three years. Um, she originally came from the Cape Winemakers Guild Protégé program, um, and she's really proved herself to be a really amazing and incredible uh, winemaker, very focused, very dedicated, um, with a real incredible passion for wine. So for Great Heart, she's the, the winemaker, um, and Andrea's on hand to, to give her advice, give her um, you know, guidance, and, and, and um, just kind of lead, lead her if she needs it. But it's really her baby. Um, so yeah, so th that's an example. Um, you know, on, on, a, on a larger level, uh, the, we, we have a board of directors for Great Art, and it's incredible. We, you know, we have a each department. So the, the vineyard team votes for a director, and they sit on the board, and and we discuss where the, the company is going to go and, and which wines to make. So it's uh, yeah, it, it's a combination of a financial reward, but also uh, you know just an upliftment in general in terms of experience. Um, skills um, and yeah, just just opportunities, I suppose. So yeah, it is such a fantastic story, Chris. I love it. Uh, so too uh, does your fan, Original Peckler from the aforementioned Cheetah Plains. <laughs> your affairs are my affairs. I'm so into Mullineux. Yes, I think <laughs> Thank you, Reggie. All right, well, let's try this wine. Uh, it is Old Vine Shannon at 120 rand a bottle. It sounds implausible, but no, that is the case. Uh, while I try it, uh, run us through, uh, even if you are drinking coffee, uh, run us through this wine. Great. Yeah, so, um, yeah, well, f firstly, that, that's the label there. So if you're in Pick and Pay, um, look, look out for the beautiful packaging. The, the artwork on the front is from a well-known South African artist, Jakku Sieberhagen, who's based in, in Hermanus. He does these incredible steel sculptures. 
and um, yeah, we, we've, we've, we commissioned him to do one that that's now the artwork for the label. Um, the, the white wine is, is a Chenin Blanc. It's 100% Chenin from the Swatland. Um, and for, for those of you who've tasted our, our Malinu wines from the Swatland, you'll know that Chenin in the Swatland is really great. That's, that's extremely well adapted and, and at home in the Swatland. Um, it's a grape that gives an incredible natural intensity. So you get this wonderful creamy texture on the palate. It's, it's, it's not a thin, light, watery wine, um, but it's also not over the top fat and sweet. It, it's, it's got this great natural texture to it, um, but also a lovely, fresh vibrancy. And I think that's, that's really why Chenin Blanc is, is so, so popular and, and, and such a signature for, for South Africa and, and especially the Swatland. It's really our, our signature grape. Um, the, the, as the farming, it's, it's mostly um, older dry farm bush vines. Um, so in the Swatland, we have a lot of these, these bush vine goble um, uh, vineyards that are naturally very low yielding. So we're, we're harvesting about four to five tons a hectare of, of, a, of a, a block. Um, we do for Grey Todd want to, to have a little bit more freshness, a little bit more crispness in the wine. So it's fermented in a combination of um, old barriques and then stainless steel tanks. So just trying to preserve the crispness, the freshness in the, in the wine. Um, and then it's, it's about a nine month fermentation, uh, sorry, nine months time uh, before bottling. It's all naturally fermented as we do with, with um, Molyneux and, and our Clove Street range. So no, no addition of yeasts or enzymes or tannins or anything. We, we, um, we try to make the wine from super healthy grapes um, that allow us then in the, in the cellar to make the wine in a natural way. Um, so on the nose, you're going you're gonna to pick up uh, lovely citrus aromatics, so sort of green limes, uh, yeah, sort of lemons uh, as well, um, a little bit of flint, sort of a, a stony crushed rocks kind of aromatics, and uh, a little bit of stone fruit as well, so, so uh, peaches, apricots, that kind of thing. And then on the palate, as I said, it's, it's got a great texture to it, uh, a nice richness, but, it, but it's a balanced uh, texture. It, it's not overpowering, it's not heavy. It's, we always like to say that they're wines that give you energy rather than tire you out. Um, so, yeah, it, it's, yeah, I, th I think uh, just a, a great, wonderful expression of, of what the Swatland is about um, and, and uh, yeah, what, what South African Shannon really is. Um, yeah. So. Not just Reggie, who's enthralled by the wine. Uh, my mother, Helen, who's busy watching in Belfast, a huge oh. mother new fan here in Belfast too. There have been a, a number of cases made their way up from Kinnegar Wines into Belfast and uh, found a very happy, if extremely brief, home uh, with uh, my mum. Uh, and it's a family affair. My uh, delightful sister-in-law, Angelique, sounds delicious. Cool. I'll keep some of this for you uh, for uh, next time you're allowed to come and visit. Uh, all right, so plenty of fans for, uh, it is, it's, it's fresh, it's crisp, it's everything that uh, is said. And it's it's 120 round a bottle for a Malinu. Go and buy it all quickly. <laughs> uh, and of course, the, such a great cause. Uh, okay, Shannon, easy enough uh, to describe. A little tougher on the second one because, uh, amongst other things, you've got a grape that, that many people just won't have had before because we don't get a lot of it. We don't see a lot of it in South Africa other than in kind of Carlet's Dorp, uh, Cape Vintages, uh, and the occasional sort of Alice Vleuren. Uh, but some, uh, some Tinta Barocca leading your red blend. Yeah. Yeah, so um, for, for the red, it's, it's also a Swatland based wine. Um, so uh, also all, all, the, all the grapes here are from the Swatland region, which is, which is our home and uh, which we, we know very, very well. Um, th this is a, a blend uh, and it's a blend of three, three grape varieties. So there, there's some Syrah in it. Uh, Syrah is a, is a grape that, that we in, in the Swatland know extremely well. It's a grape that does extremely well in our, in our warm, dry climate. Um, but the other grape that's that's in here, which I think is really, really interesting, is Tinta Barocca. Um, Tinta Barocca is originally a grape from Portugal. Um, and although Port Andrea always tells me, I, I always say Portu the Portugal is, uh, is Mediterranean, and she's like, no, it's not. It doesn't touch the Mediterranean. But it has a very similar warm, dry climate to, to what we have in, in South Africa and, and particularly in the Swatland. So Tinta is a, is a grape that's extremely well adapted to, to the Swatland as well. Um, and, it, and it really does, does so well here it, or there. Um, it is a grape that was planted um, kind of in the, in the early 1900s um, and was quite 
common uh, in, the, in the mid 1900s, mostly for making port. Um, so South Africa has a long history of making some incredible ports. So as you say, Karlitzdorp, um, there, there's a lot of it planted there. But um, in the Swatland as well, there, there have been, you know, if you think of Alice Fuluran, the, the, there's quite a lot of uh, tradition of, of making ports in the Swatland as well. And Tinta was, was one of the grapes that was really widely planted for that. And um, now that people are kind of moving away slightly from higher alcohol and, and sweeter wines, uh, port production is, is kind of tapering off a little bit. So there's a lot of really amazing old Tinta Barocca vineyards that are, that are still planted in the Swatland. A lot of them are old, 40, 50 years old. Um, so they're making incredible, um, you know, these tiny bunches with tiny berries, wines with a lot of natural intensity again, um, that, that are now available for, for us to, to use to, to make in our wines. So you're starting to see some single um, variety uh, Tinta bottlings. I know Ibn Saadi has his, his train spur and, and quite a few other producers are starting to bottle them. But we use it as a blending component. Uh, we find it, it's a grape that's got quite a lot of tannin. It's quite firm and structured. Um, so it gives a, a nice backbone uh, to, to a blend. Um, on its own, it, you, you almost if, if it's a 100% tinta, you, you kind of need to leave it, forget about it for, for 5, 10 years before those, those tannins come around. But in a blend like this, uh, it works really, really, really well. So yeah, so there's a, a high percentage of tinta, a high percentage of syrah, and then um, we've we've been in experimenting a little bit with uh, interesting enough Cabernet Sauvignon in the Swatland. Um, it's it's probably traditionally not a grape that people scream from the rooftops that you should be planting in the in the Swatland. Um, our, our climate is obviously warmer and drier than you would get in in Stellenbosch, which is really the home of, of Cab. But um, funnily enough, if you plant Cabernet in, in the really deep, sandier soils of the Paderberg mountain, it really makes it a super interesting expression of, of Cab um, with a lot of mid palate, a lot of density and, and richness to it. Um, again, you get these tiny berries, which are like the, the size of my, my pinky nail. Um, so, so yeah, so this is a blend of, of those three varieties together. So a lot of syrup, which brings a lot of if you if you smell on the nose, you'll pick up quite a bit of spice. Bit of pepperiness, um, you know, cardamoms, the, those kind of things. Um, the tinter brings on the nose a lot of fruit, um, so blackberries, raspberries, uh, plums, so, so darker fruit. Um, and then the cab, a little bit of um, kind of bell pepper, I suppose. Um, but and then on the palate, those those three varieties again work extremely well together. So yeah, I think it's just a great expression again of of the Swatland, like the Shannon is. Um, this wine has a nice a power to it. It does come from a warm, dry place. But as again, as with the Shannon, it's it's a balanced uh, power. It, it's got a lovely freshness, a brightness to it. Um, the, I know Gaynor in the cellar does quite a bit of whole bunch ferments on the on the Syrah and the Tinta. So that, that brings a, a little bit of spice and a little bit of freshness also on the palate. So yeah, so quite a powerful uh, red blend, but it's it's a balanced power, I think, again, as, as with the Shannon. Uh, lovely dryness to it and a lovely price once again 120 round a bottle before chris realizes he's got his maths completely wrong go and buy it you will like it uh very quickly before we wrap up uh, the future of great heart where do you see it going uh, what is the uh, the longer term plan here so well, look it, it's been extremely well received so far we, we're looking um to to try and find good partners like like pick and pay um the in, as you mentioned earlier, Malinu and Lupusant are, are, are smaller uh, production brands or wineries, so we, it's it's sometimes more of a challenge to to work with with larger uh, multiple retailers. So it, and it's a great opportunity for for us in general to to look to to find partners like Pick and Pay in in the UK. Uh, we're selling through Waitrose, um, so yeah, th th those are the type of partners we're we're looking for. Um, Gaynor has asked us and, and we, it, you know, it's her baby. So she is going to be doing some smaller volume, um, kind of passion projects or experimental wines. So, uh, we, she has bottled a, a small volume of Chardonnay and a small volume of Cabernet from Stellenbosch. And, uh, she's got a very exciting, um, yeah, another variety that she's going to be working with in, in harvest 2022. So there will be smaller uh, bottlings of, of some more uh, maybe geeky or, or uh, you know, di different uh, interesting varieties. Um, 
there you go. That, that's the cab. Um, and yeah, I mean, it, it's it's really our, our staff's baby. So so um, you know, we we meet twice a, twice a year to to kind of determine the the, the direction of the project. Um, and it's it's um, you know under under in my guidance, I think that you know it's it's a project that has a really stable base. Um, and uh, yeah, hopefully a, a very long and very successful future. Um, and there will always be a, a combination of these the Shannon and the Red. So slightly larger volume wines that, that are more widely available. And then a few kind of the salt and pepper, the, the, the more geeky intellectual wines, which um, probably will be available direct from, from us at the winery. It is a lovely project. It's an uplifting project. And gee, do we need some uplifting stories in the South African wine industry at the moment. Uh, Chris, enjoy your time over in California. Uh, you. You're obviously going to run Riot because you're armed with South African Rand, uh, which are particularly valuable when in the States. Uh, and, uh, uh, yeah, regards to Andrea, we look forward to having her back on the show again soon. And congratulations. This is a, such a great project, a wonderful initiative. I know it's off to a flying start. It's only going to continue. And, uh, and well done to you both and to your team on a, a really, really special project. No, thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thanks you uh, for this, for your time, for the support. Um, and, and as I said, I think in Tupic and Pay for, for having the vision to, to get behind us and, uh, and support this yeah, amazing cause. So, yeah, thanks to all of you and, and to everyone out there. Uh, go, go look for it in store. Um, it was supposed to be listed last week, but obviously with prohibition, um, that's on hold. But as soon as pick and pay's doors open again or, or, the, or the, the wine shelves open again, uh, the wines will be on shelf. It's already in the warehouses. So, so please support it. Expect lengthy, lengthy queues when that happens. Chris Mullineau, one half of the Mullineau team who delight us so consistently with some wonderful wine and are doing so now with a brand new range. It's not just some lovely wine, but such a wonderful project, empowering their entire staff with shares in a new company making the great hard wines, and that's Shannon and the Tinta Barocca Syrah Red Blend with some cab available exclusively at Pick and Pay. That wraps us up for this evening. A big thank you to Chris for joining us all the way from California. Thank you too to Iselle from KWV, the mentors, and all seven of the range that she very kindly sent up to me a couple of weeks ago. Some cracking wine there once again. And a reminder, on Thursday, we'll be over at Casa Frigion, and we'll be celebrating the trophy winners at the Old Mutual Trophy Wine Show and catching up with some of them basking in their collective success with Michael alongside me. That does it for this evening. Keep drinking and supporting South African wine if you are beyond our borders. Gee, we need it. And hopefully back in South Africa, we'll be drinking wine together again soon. Thanks for watching. See you on Thursday. Goodbye. To join the Pick and Pay Wine Club, simply SMS your smart shopper number to 36775. It's absolutely free and you'll get for yourself three times the smart shopper points on every bottle of wine bought. You'll also get a 20% discount on 10 different wines each month, a 25% discount on a case of wine and a magnum, some terrific competitions and invitations to awesome events.